A few weeks ago, we took a look at the Super G module, the first Gemini transmitter in the FPV hobby. And this thing is amazing, sending double the packets on different frequencies, all while broadcasting at one watt. This thing here is amazing, and it must have if you're flying in high interference environments. But what if this same technology could be found built into the radio? Well, that's now possible with the T20 Gemini. So let's open this up and see what's new. Okay, so here it is, the T20 Gemini. And this thing looks almost identical to the original T20. The only difference here is a redesigned box with some new graphics on here, and just a little bit different dimensions, a little bit taller compared to the original T20. So let's open this up and see what the major difference is. <laughs> right there. All right, pretty nice, let's open this up. All right, so it's a little bit different here, T20 Gemini. So there's a new quick start manual on here, put this to the side. And then you have a case for your actual radio. Now, I don't think the original T20 had a case, so that's a pretty cool touch. So let's open this up. Wow, okay. <laughs> All right, so here's your lanyard or your strap. Now they've gone with a different color here. Typically Jumper has this bright color on here, but this is a black one with some orange lettering on here, Express LRS. You also have a USB-C to a USB-A cable. You have some springs here for your gimbal, a certificate or a, Q, a quality control card, which is good. Then you have your stickers here for your switches here, your six selectable switches. And we've seen it before on the original T20S. Okay, and here it is, the T20 Gemini. And this thing has some gimbal protectors on here. Obviously this is just some foam. And this thing looks just as pretty and as beautiful as I remember it on the original T20S. You have these nice gimbals. Now this is very similar, almost identical as far as cosmetic and the shell compared to the original T20S. This thing is pretty much the same. As you can see right here, we have the original right here. So same nice color, same RDC 90 gimbals, all the same switches, channels, knobs, pods. They're all the same. At first glance, these things look identical. The only significant difference here is these antennas right here. And we'll talk about this a little bit later once we talk about the main features of the T20 Gemini. Now on the back here, it's also very similar as well. The only difference here is that you had a big or a large heatsink on here. This one had a one watt module on here. And this is a pretty big heatsink on here. Now with the T20 Gemini, we have two actual transmitters in here and therefore they went with an active cooler. So now we have a fan on here to help cool these two transmitters in here. And it looks very, very similar, which is a good thing because the ergonomics and design of this was really, really nice. Now the colors look just slightly different, but it has a shade of blue in here. And that was actually a pretty good look in here. But as I said before, everything on here is identical. You have your gimbals, your LCD screen, or the OLED screen on here, and all your channels, these are all the same. Okay, so let's talk about some of the difference here. And the big difference here is this one has Gemini. What that means is that this one here has two transmitter modules on here. So that's why we have two antennas versus one. On the original one, we just had this nice collapsible antenna. This thing could rotate, which is really good for polarity. In this case, this one here does rotate as well, but as you can see, we have two antennas on here. As you can see, it says antenna one and antenna two. And the main purpose here is that this thing is gonna send out double the packets, giving you the ability to have a stronger link quality going to your drone. So that's pretty awesome. Not only does it send double the packets, but it also sends it on different frequencies. Now I talked a lot about um, Gemini when I talked about the Super G module. I'll leave the video linked above so you can take a look at it and get a better understanding for why Gemini is so awesome. Now the T20 Gemini also has the ability, just like the original T20S, to add an external module. And you have the ports right down here. This thing is hard to come out, but you can actually, let's see here, oh, there we go. And you have an XD30 as well as some kind of a JST plug right here so you can attach your external module too. Now below that you have the battery case on here and this takes a 21700 battery which is a little bit larger than the 18650 battery. But we will be using the same batteries that we use on the T20S. There we go. Alright so we're just going to remove this, get access to the case on here and you can put your 21700 batteries on here. Now this can also accommodate the 18650 batteries and we do have some here from the T20S. We're just going to plug this in. Perfect. Here's your battery. So just going to put the cover back on and then I am going to put this back on here as, as well. Now I'm not going to go over all the features of this radio. I've done a full review 
on the T20S and this thing is pretty much identical to the T20 Gemini with the exception that this one doesn't have the Gemini module in here as well. So if you want to know about all these switches, features, gimbals, and why they went with the RDC90 gimbals overhaul gimbals, take a look at that video. I'll leave it linked above and below so you can see it. All right, so let's put this to the side here and let's power this up. Cool. Now, as you can hear, this one here does have the Edge TX firmware on here. Now, this also has a model already built into here. So let's zoom in here. But we're just gonna go to some of the menus on here. You have your navigation wheels here. These paths don't really mean anything. You have your trim, which is your 5D <laughs> trims. Okay, cool. So as you can see, it says model one. So Jumper was able to build a model for us in this radar here, straight from the factory, which is pretty cool. Saves you some time. But if you're gonna fly some other kind of drone, say a helicopter or a plane, you might wanna alter this model in here. But for a quad, it's nice that they already had this in here. So we're just gonna take a look at it and see what the settings are. Hit this. And then we can scroll through the pages and see what's in here. So page one, here's page two. You can obviously change the model name. It says model zero one. And we do have the inputs already set. All right, so let's go into the Express LRS configurator here on the tools. And we can see everything here under the Express LRS. So all the settings on here, you have your packet rate and that's the same for any other Express LRS transmitter receiver, your telemetry ratio, your switching modes, your antenna mode. So this one here is set to antenna two. So it's not set by in Gemini by default. And if you wanna take advantage of the Gemini system on here, then you could do that. But in this case here, if you wanna to connect to a traditional Express LRS receiver, you can select either antenna one or antenna two, or just switch between the two and you can use your traditional drones with regular Express LRS receiver. In this case, we do wanna demonstrate the Gemini mode and take advantage of those features. So we are gonna select it and then switch to Gemini. And there it is, Gemini, we select it. It refreshed. Model match, you can put that on or on if you do wanna take advantage of that. And this one here, we do have the TX Power. It has 10 milliwatts. I'm probably just gonna to stick to 100 milliwatts. That's pretty good. Now below that, you can also change the dynamic power on or off. I usually fly with my dynamic power off and it just stays, gives me a constant power output. Now below that, you have the fan threshold. It's set to around 250 milliwatts. And in my case, I typically don't fly that high of a power setting, but um, if that's the case, then this is never gonna come on. But we wanna test out this fan and see how it sounds. So let's reduce that to a little bit lower number. Let's say 25 milliwatts just for this purpose and hit back and the fan should be on, or should come on. It's ramping up. Is there two fans in here? It's not that loud actually, so that's pretty awesome. We're just gonna go back into the power settings and move the threshold back up to 250. You have your VTX administrator, Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth joystick, the bind mode, and this one does say 3.x, so it's on 3.x firmware on here, and then the exit. All right. Okay, so that's how you wanna set up your T20 radio for Gemini. But to make this whole thing work, you'd also need to have a drone with true diversity receivers. Now, this one here is my Nazgul 5v2, and I do have a true diversity receiver in here. This is the one by Beta FPV. This is the uh, Super D receiver. And as you can see, it not only has two antennas, but it also has what is hard to see in here, but two actual receiver modules in the receiver. So this one here is a true diversity receiver and not just a antenna diversity receiver. Okay, so I'm gonna power this up, try to bind this to my radio. Now there's numerous ways of binding your radio to the receiver. First of all, they have to be on the same major firmware. So if you're on 2.x, the radio also has to be on 2.x. And if your receiver is on 3.x, then your radio should be on 3.x firmware. Now these two devices are on the same major firmware number, 3.x. But the only thing is this one doesn't have my binding or pass phrase on here. So once I power on the joint, it's not gonna bind automatically. So I'm gonna try to change the bind phrase on my radio. Go to the Express LRS go down to Wi-Fi connectivity, boom, right there. And I can hit enable Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna enable that, it's on now. I'm gonna go to my settings, try to connect to it and see if I can do it that way, instead of going to the computer. All right, so now the binding phrase does match. Scoot back a little bit. All right, there's the arm. All right, so that works. 
Okay, so now that my Raider has the correct binding phrase on here, I just wanna make sure that this is in the right mode and the receiver is also in the right mode. So I'm just gonna make sure that these two are bound and they're communicating. So I'm just gonna connect the drone one more time. Okay, telemetry is recovered. I'm just gonna go to the Express LRS uh, wizard or configurator, tools, and let's just see. We still in Gemini mode, which is good. And it's gonna be hard to see in here, but it does say Beta FPV Super D, and that's the super diversity receiver. I'm gonna select that. Protocol is Crossfire, and then the RX mode, it does say Gemini. So not only is the radio in Gemini, but the receiver is in Gemini as well. And it actually shows the actual firmware on the receiver, so 3.3.0. So exit, and we're good. So I can just fly like this, go out in the field, go fly my drone, and we should have Gemini, guys. So I've done a full review on this one as well, showing you how this thing here works and what it looks like. I'll leave the video linked above and below. So let me know what you think about this T20 Gemini. It's pretty cool that these guys are innovating putting Gemini built into the radio, guys. Now, if you wanna get one of these radios, whether it be the T20S or the T20 Gemini, I'll leave links above and below so you can take a look at it. So, anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.